Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. I hope you enjoy. Collective, written by underscore sky underscore underscore. Karal knew his information would shock the Galactic Assembly, but it was his duty to report his findings about this new species. But how he would do it would determine a lot about their future relation. There is no doubt in my uh, main processing unit that Terrans are the most peaceful civilization in the galaxy. But I do understand there are those who still find it hard to believe and consider the term peaceful civilization to be an oxymoron. Many individuals present in the crowd nodded with their head, but a majority stood still. After all, Every civilization is forged through conflict and warfare, without exception. Admittedly, mankind has a share of wars, but only minor skirmishes. We are still in the process of the first contact protocol, but their history data, backed by data collected by our scout drones, indicate the validity of their claims. Now, almost everyone in the audience looks surprised. It was not unusual for some new species to try and sell the story of being peaceful in order to have an element of surprise on their potential future opponents. Like nobody had tried that strategy before. Yes, my fellow sapien, it is true that you have heard about the Terran's homeworld. Not a single significant nuclear-scale war ever erupted there. Our gasps of surprise could be heard from the few aliens which were until then most vigorous skeptics in this whole peaceful civilization nonsense. Stealthily, one tall individual rose a prominent general in his own species, his body genetically upgraded to perfection by himself, his mind adapted with the sole purpose of tactical strategic reasoning. I refuse to believe such nonsense. It is obvious we are dealing with a ruse. Your senses have been deceived slash hacked, and the data corrupted. Commotion rushed through the assembled audience, sound of their voices rising, and many of them could not do anything but agree. But Karar held his calm. Respectful general, his voice now strong, as that was the only way to communicate with such a person. I do understand your view on this matter, and if you have any doubts about collected data, I implore you to double-check it yourself. I most certainly will, and my race will fully prepare for the incoming war. As it is obvious, these Terrans are planning to take us by surprise. And with those words, the general left the assembly. Few others followed, but Karar continued with his presentation nonetheless. Now I wish to talk more about the Terran history, but what will surprise you even more is that they ever had only two planetary wars, or as they call them, the World Wars. Truly unbelievable when you take into account that on average every spacefaring species needs at least average 33 of those conflicts to move on to the space warfare. Following those words, one of the prominent military historians rose up. He was an even more respected figure, as he only specialized into the history of wars he personally participated at, what made him historical expert in around 42 comics. Excuse me, if you may, sir, but what is the reason for such deviation from the norm? After all, my own species held the title of least amount of world wars until the space age, and we had 17 of them. Thus, I conclude there must have been some distinct geographical features to facilitate severe lack of world wars. Again, many in the assembly nodded with their head. There were the cases of species which only had a one medium-sized continent on their planet, or some empire was able to come on top early in their history. However, such empires faced with no external threat, would always stagnate until they collapsed into the number of lesser states, which would then eventually engage in warfare. But it was theorized that there existed a chance of such empire lasting well into the space age. Ah, yes. I see most of you rushed here and probably had no time to go over the specific data regarding their homeworld. To continue, Kara activated the hologram in front of the assembly, which showed them the perfect representation of Earth. Now, as you see, there are no specific geographical features which prohibited or discourage a world war. The planet is filled with regular-sized continents, and thus... But before he could finish his words, the respectful historian interrupted him. This can't be. 
For reason's sake, just look at that continent there, riddled with pronunciates. It is like geographical quagmire created to agitate war and conflict. Garan didn't even have to look to know which of the continents the historian was referring to. Yes, respected member of the assembly, the continent you pointed to is called Europe, and has been the source of both world wars for their species experienced. For a few moments, everything was quiet. Nobody knew what to say. Then suddenly, Ridiculous! You insult my profession and my honor. To claim there is a sapien species which could not be forced into constant warfare in this geographical nightmare of a planet. Just look at it. I do understand your disbelief, but it is true. I was surprised as anyone else. However, facts are facts, and data is data. The historian then did the same as the general. But before walking out, he tossed a few violent complaints about Lunatic, who made him travel a few thousand light years for nothing. Supposedly, he wanted to see in person this historic event, only to find himself listening to a mentally ill individual. So, Kara went on. After all, he expected there would be incidents like this. So now, when we rushed over the geological landscape upon which Terran civilization developed, I wished to go over their biology. This time, nobody interrupted for a long time. As he went in details about their genetic makeup, internal structure, and aspects of their main processing unit, which obviously had an extreme effect on their psychology. He even got a few applause from a couple of hive mind representatives slash drones. Then, he went over their immune system, tissue composition, and specific environmental adaptation. The assembly found it interesting as Terrans were actually the first sapien species which possessed sweating type of heat dispersal system. A few biologists eventually went into serious questioning about sweat delivery system, its capacity, etc. Finally, as Kara was about to finish, one of the biologists rose up to ask an additional question. He asked respectful member of the assembly, there is something you would wish to ask? Well, yes. He nodded with his head. He actually had a head. You went into extreme details regarding their biology, functioning of the drones, and they seem to be extremely autonomous. They even reproduce amongst themselves. Truly amazing. Sounds of agreement could be heard from almost every biologist and hive mind representative drone in the room. The biologist continued, So is that how their queen manages to control billions of them with ease, as her body doesn't have to spend any energy on building up the population? Instead, it can focus solely on the aspects of ruling the hive? This question caught Karan off guard, even confused him for a bit. Excuse me, respected biologist, Karan spoke slowly, but what specifically are you talking about? His response was quick and fluent. Well, isn't it obvious? Most of the hive minds have a critical population limit, and upon breaching it, they often separate into two or more groups. What in the turn leads to a conflict and warfare? But here, you presented a hive mind species whose biology somewhat bypassed the problem by outsourcing the reproduction to its drones. This has been theorized by many biologists as plausible, but unlikely. Thus, we are extremely excited to learn more about their control and communication system. Only now, Kara figured out the obvious misconceptions others got about humans. But he did not want the situation to escalate as the two others before that, so he tried to be polite. Well, uh, the matter of fact is uh, they do not actually have a centralized governing structure in the form of a queen or any other biological organism. They are quite decentralized. Instantly, a commotion and whispers started floating around the assembly, everybody present looking completely stunned. But the respected biologist continued speaking. You mean to say they have a decentralized hive mind? Biological one at that one. We only ever thought it possible with synthetic organisms. This, this is marvelous. Kara face slapped himself, as he very well knew how hive minds thought slash work. Every species which evolved as a hive mind, always without exception, had a problem with rebellious isolated drones, and different queens fighting each other was a norm. But evolution, always favoring the queen which either had better or more numerous armor. But biology had its limits even when given billions of years to move forward. Respected biologist, Kara went on, as you say, humans are a marvelous species. 
but I am not sure they would even qualify as a hive mind, because they do not have queens, and their uh, drones are highly autonomous, though they do seem to possess an extraordinary case of collective intelligence. He hoped to steer the topic onto a more friendly ground for the hive minds, and adopted his line of talk accordingly. Like some hive minds, Terrans have a considerable information lag, but far more substantial than any known hive mind. Regardless, they overcome it with high autonomy of their drones, which can build up a large amount of knowledge and experience into their main processing unit. All right, spoke the biologist, but how do they exchange information? Some form of electromagnetic waves, bioluminescence, or, well, actually, Terrans use verbal conversation and only minor gestures to communicate in between. Regardless of the topic, radio waves only came in after they discovered electricity, etc. Verbal conversation. Ah. Oh. The biologist and the hive mind representative slash drones were as confused and as surprised as it gets. Their own respective species all had far faster ways to communicate between biological individuals. It wasn't like they never used sound but it was always a second or third method of communication, never the first. It is true they were exchange information and solve problems together using only signals transmitted by sound. Some internal discussion escalated between the few hive minds, debate and arguments about functionality of such biologicals, their advantages and flaws. At first they all agreed it was certainly a military advantage not to worry about losing a queen, but the tactical performance of the troops, which were not directed in unison, certainly lowered quality of their soldiers' fleets. Still, the biologist voiced over the others and continued, how were they able to avoid so many of the world wars and never attack each other with nuclear weapons? From what I was able to gather, their leaders were always afraid that it would cause a mutual self-destruction and thus avoided it. Kara answered, oh, leaders, they do not have queens, but do have individual leaders. So you say they are not hive mind at all, or due to them being so decentralized, there are individual drones leaders, which act as control nodes for their unified sentience. Hmm, you could say so, but at the moment I'd put Terran somewhere between the loosened hive mind and individualistic species. What followed next was not expected. The same respected biologist, which was eager to speak, suddenly broke out into laughter. <laughs> oh, sir, your sense of humor is extreme. I almost fell for your joke. First you say they are a peaceful civilization. Then they are individualist with collective intelligence. <laughs> Any more oxymoron you can throw at us. Now it's true. When it comes to Terrans, they are able to work together in thousands upon thousands of them to solve the problems of the individual. And while other individualistic species focus solely on the extreme intellect and exceptional individuals, mankind instead tends to work together. Individualistic species were famous slash notorious amongst the hive minds for their exceptional drones, some of which rivaled the intellect of the queens. But they always lacked team and collective reasoning to get most of their main processing unit. Please do not waste our time on this nonsense, the biologist spoke. Individualistic species are dependent on extremely intelligent individuals who accomplish great things. Far above the capabilities of main processing unit the humans have. Yes, they are far smarter than any drone, but compared to you and me, their mental capabilities are wanting to say the least. Now we understood why many of them first thought humans were a high mind species. Immediately after he went over the biology, after all, their main processing unit were barely fit the size of the galactic norm and not very complex or efficient when it comes to advanced biological processing algorithms. The only thing they had going for them was the dismal energy requirements individual Terran main processing units required. I know Terrans do seem too alien, too unrealistic to most, but they do exist, and for our first contact with them is of the extreme importance. Yes, they are not individually intelligent to technically be considered sapient, certainly not when compared to me 
or any other member of the individualistic species, where only minimal communication is required for transfer of extremely complex ideas, and where a single person can basically come up with everything it needs, learn every skill it deemed necessary on a whim. But our main processing unit is so fine-tuned by a relentless evolution of intelligence that we got too accustomed to those abilities, and I say that we can learn a lot from the Terrans. What could we possibly learn from, as you admit, mentally handicapped species? The biologist erupted. His own species, after all, was one of the most intelligent individualistic organisms in the galaxy. But Kara would not be interrupted. He continued his speech. Imagine if our individualistic species could work together as them to have our own research teams and joint research organizations. Imagine what we could do with our large main processing units if creatures so mentally handicapped like the Terrans could form a space-faring civilization. Then imagine what we could do. Their main processing unit weighs only around 1.5 kilograms of organic matter. They can't even do quantum equations in their head, but have built the quantum computers anyway. Preposterous! The biologist erupted. You talk nonsense! How can any individual construct a quantum computer without being able to solve quantum equations? They are clearly a hive mind. The entire assembly erupted. Discussion heated. Biologists started debating each other, the hive mind joining in to recheck the data provided by Kara. But you don't see. It all makes sense. Every species we know in our galaxy evolved through ruthless warfare and poaching of inferiors. Humans simply never had that happen in any significant scale. They moved towards technology far before acquiring intelligence we usually see necessary for it. He then pointed at the biologist. Look at yourself. Your own species evolved as super apex predators on your planet even before you knew fire. Both your brain and body developed so you could hunt by yourself, not in a pack. It was not so for the humans. The biologist countered. Well, of course. That is how intelligence rises at individualistic species. Once the single super predator appears, able to pursue and outsmart any prey in its biosphere, thus having plenty of energy to power its large brain, or seduce slash mate more females. Quickly, they end up fighting and outwitting each other. Evolution quickly does the rest. Any animals which hunt in packs have to share its prey. Plus, they are always there to help each other. Thus, evolution is not so strict. Even weak and less intelligent have had a chance to reproduce and survive in such an environment. Not really a catalyst for development of intelligence. Following those words, the entire assembly rose up and started to applaud him in their own specific way. But Terrans do exist. They are here. I have data. They are real. And I have discovered them. Few of the hive minds already confirmed with these data was correct, and somewhat stood by Kara, but not overly eager to agree with him on his conclusions. The biologist then replied to all of them, It is clear the Terrans are too lacking in individual intelligence to be considered an individualistic species. Their drones might be highly autonomous, their governing structure decentralized, but I conclude they are still a hive. True, they are unusual, far out of the norm, but hive mine nonetheless. That is simply not true, the rest spoke. They are individualistic, but just communicate between themselves a lot, share massive amounts of information and such. Just like hive minds do. What was my point in the first place? The biologist pushed his theory. Well, your species communicates too, is it not? For mating purposes, diplomacy with other species, etc., but not closely to the extent that Terrans do. Data you provided on average communication rate and bandwidth of individual humans more than fits the norm for drones. Without hesitation, the present hive minds agreed in unison. To them too, Terrans seemed far more a hive mind than anything else. One of them stating that even the Kura himself said that human drones have the type of collective intelligence. Well, yes. They work together far more than other individualistic species, cause they have to. They do not have 13 kilogram heavy main processing unit, nor do they live for 513 years, so they have to rely on each other far more. Just like us hive minds, a few of the drones spoke in unison. 
Obviously, the biologist rushed in with his opinion. Thus, I'll put forward the suggestion that we officially classify them as a hive mind species and leave it to the hive minds to deal with one of their own. We already fight too much against each other. The last thing we need is a war between individualistic species and hive minds. All due to one confused collective intelligence, which is not aware of what it is. We agree. The drones again spoke in unison. And that is basically how the well-known Terran Collective got classified as a hive mind by every other species in the galaxy, except by themselves. Many saw it as the first recorded case of a bipolar hive mind which has serious identity problems. But the facts are the facts, and data is data. End of story. I would quickly like to thank the T5 channel members and Patreons. Casper Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Barky, Lord Azrakal, It's Difficult to Pronounce, Dragzoon, WRE, Holly's Sister, Arcadian. Thank you very much.